Welcome back to the final leg of our tour. In this segment, we go back into history filled with sunken ships, buried treasure, and the famous tsunami of 1867. Crumb Bay was the place where the island freighter the Witch Shoal 2 was anchored when Hurricane Klaus sank her in 1984. She was roughly patched and was on her way under tow to Puerto Rico when she sank to the ocean floor about four miles west of here. She settled upright on the seafloor and became one of the most famous and picturesque dive sites of the Virgin Islands. Upon subsequent investigation, it was discovered that our inter-island freighter had a much more illustrious history. She was originally built as an LST, landing ship tank, in 1943. These ships were given numbers as names because so many of them were built. Our ship was LST-467. She served in the Pacific Theater of the Second World War under General MacArthur, seeing action in the Pacific landings and the Battle of Leyte. She was awarded seven battle stars and a unit commendation. It was later found that some of the original crew members were still around in the US, and in 2004, Bill Schutz came to St. Thomas with four of his sons. His sons all dived their dad's old ship while Atlantis submarines took Bill around the vessel for one last meeting. She lies in 95 feet of water and is 35 feet from the surface of the shallowest part and makes an awesome dive. At 491 acres, Water Island is the smallest of the US Virgin Islands. It can be reached from the Crown Bay dock on the west side of the city. The first known inhabitants were Taino Indians. There were four Indian campsites on Water Island, none of which were very large. Evidence of their habitation is revealed by Indian artifacts, including pieces of pottery, tools, piles of seashells which at one time have contained sea creatures consumed for food, charcoal and human bone. So these Indians lived on Water Island about 500 years ago. Water Island gets its name from the fact that it was once one of the few places in the Caribbean with freshwater ponds where sailing vessels could replenish their fresh water casks. Both the pirates and the merchantmen were accustomed to coming into Water Island for water. There were many rumors of treasure being buried on Water Island by the pirates to preclude its capture by the British and American warships. Several attempts to recover this South American gold were made, but without success. In the 1890s, a stranger produced a rough chart of one of the bays of Water Island, showing a cross where a trunk containing doubloons had been buried by the stranger's father, who had been a quartermaster on a pirate ship. The stranger suggested to Christopher Daniel they join together and make an attempt to recover this buried treasure. Daniel declined, and several days later the stranger and his boat disappeared. Christopher Daniel organized a search party and went to the area where the treasure was supposed to be buried, which was on Flamingo Bay shore. There they found a sizable excavation about four feet deep and the remains of an old leather trunk. When Christopher Daniel turned the trunk over, one gold doubloon dropped out on the ground. <laughs> On the afternoon of November 18, 1867, a magnitude 7.5 earthquake occurred in the Anagada Trough located between the U.S. Virgin Islands of St. Croix and St. Thomas. These are excerpts from actual accounts. November 19, 1867. In my cabin about half past two, my attention was attracted by a sudden tremor seizing the ship, increasing in intensity. I recognized it immediately as an earthquake. Ten minutes had not passed when the report was brought to me that the sea outside the harbor had risen and was coming in a huge volume, as if to engulf us all. All told, some 60 vessels and their precious cargo were lost to the ocean's deep. A small Spanish man of war, the name of which I regret I cannot recall, deserves special mention. During the entire gale, she steamed as best she could from point to point in the harbor, as she was directed by the cry for help or the shriek of the drowning, until she had lost all boats but her smallest one and many a brave men. When her commander heard the cry of a captain of a French vessel who was clinging to a buoy, he called for volunteers to man the only boat left, a mere toy in such a gale. But his men, hesitating to run the hazard, he leaped single-handed into the boat and shoved off to his own destruction. Many of the ships that were lost during this account still lie at the bottom of the harbour. <laughs>